Hi everybody, it's Mrs. PG from your Earth Science class at Wisconsin Connections Academy. Today we are going to be looking at a portfolio from Unit 7, Lesson 5, and it is um, determining the epicenter of an earthquake. Okay, so in this portfolio you are instructed to reference your textbook because that is where the directions are supposed to be. However, I am going to ask that you break that rule and we are going to be looking at a, um, an alternative resource on the web that I think will work a lot better in our circumstance than using the one in the textbook. Okay, so go to my website, which as you guys hopefully know is accessible through the message boards. And when you get to the Earth Science website, scroll down to where it says Portfolio. And then under portfolio, you're gonna see um, a couple of things that you will use today. You're gonna see the template, which is where you'll put all your answers. And then you'll see this thing that says online lab with better graph. So hopefully that's gonna cue you in that that's the lab that I want you to work on. So let's go to the online lab with better graph. And that brings you to this. This is a lab, um, a Glencoe lab, that does essentially the same thing as your book, but everything's online, so you don't have to do any of it on pencil paper. It works out a lot better and is a lot more accurate. However, there are different cities here that are mentioned in the textbook. When you open the template, it's going to show you three different cities, New York City, Seattle, and Mexico City. You will not use these three cities. Instead, you will alter this and you will choose three locations on this map. Location A, B, C, D, and E. And you can just call them A, B, C, D, and E. You don't have to guess like where they are. So what you're gonna do is um, you're going to start this up and it's going to first announce that there's been an earthquake. Oh no, where is it? Um, I would suggest muting your TV or your monitor because it's very loud, actually. So that's muted for me because it bothered my ears. So if you just X out of this, you're now going to choose three cities to use to determine the epicenter of the earthquake. See, the idea is based on that when you have an earthquake, you have seismic waves that are released when the earthquake occurs. And there are different types of seismic waves and they move differently and they move at different uh, speeds as well. So the two that we're concerning ourselves with today are the P waves, which is primary, and the S waves, which are secondary. P waves travel faster than S waves do. So when you look at a seismograph printout, you will first see the squiggle lines of the P wave, and then there'll be a leg, and then you'll see the squiggle lines of the S wave. And it's that time in between, the lag time, that you're gonna be the most concerned with because that's gonna tell us how far away the earthquake actually is. The longer that lag time is, the greater the distance that the earthquake is from us. So here, if I, Let's say click on C. Didn't seem like anything happened, but what I need to do is I need to scroll down to the bottom of this page because it's going to show me a arrival time of my P waves here and the arrival time of my S waves here. And the P waves arrived at 4, 15, and 50 seconds, and the S waves arrived at 4, 19, and 30 seconds. So we need to figure out the difference in time here from 4, 19 and 30 seconds to 4, 15 and 50 seconds. So let's do a little math, shall we? I'm gonna go ahead and put your attention down on my paper. And I'm gonna make this a little bigger so that takes up the screen. You can kind of see so you can kind of see it a little bit better, maybe even zoom in a little bit. So this requires us to remember that there are 60 seconds in a minute. So you can't do the subtraction 
the same as you would normally do a subtraction problem. 30 is smaller than 50, so that can't be subtracted. You do have to borrow like you normally would. I'm going to borrow a minute from the minutes column, but that gives us an additional 60 seconds. So I'm going to take this 30 seconds and add 60 to it, which gives us a total of 90 seconds. So then when I subtract, I end up with a difference of 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, that's the difference between the P waves and the S waves. Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of put this back up here. Oops, a little too big. Kind of scary when it's that big. Um, all right, so what we're going to do here is that 3 minutes and 40 seconds, we are going to use this distance graph. Click on where it says distance graph, and then I'm just going to kind of scroll up. And we're going to find 3 minutes and 40 seconds over on the y-axis. So here's 3 minutes, here's 4 minutes, and each one of these intervals is 20, I think it's 20 seconds, 20, 40, nope. So it's 30, 60, I don't know what it is. <laughs> 1, 2, so is it 25 probably. So 3 minutes, 325. Give me a second. This is obviously 3 minutes and 30 seconds. So that must be 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah, I'm kind of forgetting of the 60 second thing myself. So 340 is going to be real close to 345. So if I scroll over to the red line, and then I see where that intersects the 3 minute and 40 second mark, and then I follow that down here, it's at approximately... I don't know. Um, this is going to be 2250 here. This is going to be 2125. So I would say then um, I don't know, 2050 maybe? That's probably my best guess. 2050 kilometers. Okay. So then one of the things is going to ask you on your um, template is to put that, so that was 2050 kilometers, but it's going to ask you to put that in miles too. So to get it in miles, you're going to take that number and divide by 0.6. So where's my calculator? 2050 divided by 0.6 is 3,470. And this was, I don't know which one this was. This was C. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of where it gives you that data. Going back to this, now I know that it is 2,050 kilometers. So I'm going to take this compass and I'm going to move it to around 2,050 kilometers. Well, it doesn't let me do that. <laughs> so I guess we'll just go to the nearest, you know, amount there. 2,000. That's pretty close, right? So I'm going to go on C. I'm going to draw the circle around C. Beautiful. That's pretty easy because a lot of times when you're using a compass, it's hard to get a nice circle around there. Okay? And then you are going to um, do the same thing with two other cities. So you're going to have to read the seismogram. Remember that you're scrolling down to get that seismogram reading. And you will have to determine the difference between the P waves and the S waves. And then you will have to um, use the compass to create the right width and draw it on the map. And once you get three circles on your map, you should be able to determine the epicenter of the earthquake. And when you do that, 
you can click on this little star here and it will let you know if you are correct or if you are incorrect. So then you need to tell me what the epicenter actually is. Finally, the template is going to ask you to do some questions on page 241 of your textbook. And I'm going to ask that you do these. Even though we did a procedure that was out of the textbook, it mirrors the one in the textbook. So you should be able to do these. So going to your book here, you're doing questions one through three. Okay, I'm going to keep moving my picture. It's in the way. All right. Um, so question one says, how far from the epicenter are the three cities located? You can use your data table that you've created to answer that. What would the distances be in kilometers? Well, we've done that as well. So you can write that information from your data table. Pretty easy so far, right? And then you're going to tell me where that epicenter is, the approximate longitude and latitude. We don't see longitude and latitude on this map here, but once you get the location of the epicenter, you can use the map here in the book, if I scroll down a little bit, to determine the approximate longitude and latitude. Okay, Longitude, remember, is going up and down, and latitude is like a ladder. So, for example, if it were this point right where my mouse is, it would have a longitude of 100 degrees. Um, looks like 100 degrees west, and it would be 40 degrees north. Okay, so here we're dealing with west and north la or west lati west longitude and north latitude. Okay. The last thing you're going to need to do is the go further section. You're going to be using a website to locate recent earthquakes and tell me 10 recent earthquakes, when they occurred, where they occurred, and their magnitudes on the Richter scale. And I would suggest using the um, national, what is it, the NSGS website. National, oh, ha, ha, USGS, excuse me, earthquakes. Having a moment there. United States Geological Survey. They have um, a website that is all just recent earthquakes, okay? And they'll, you'll be able to click on this and find recent earthquakes very easily, and it's a very reliable place to get statistics. That's it, everybody. If you have questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. My extension is 2204 or you can send me a webmail message. Good luck, everyone.